Good morning. If you find your place in Romans chapter 12, we are in part two of changing his image, chapter six, getting in touch with reality. Well, you talk about a beautiful, beautiful day out there. Um, is that, that better, John? Is that, am I on? No. Uh, Try this, John. How's that? Better? No? Okay. Testing, testing. <laughs> that was a commercial. Uh, early. Thanks, brother. Romans 12, if you find your place there, I'd ask you to follow along. If you don't have a Bible, well, I'd be good listeners. Um, the thing that annoys me about change is I don't like change. I may have company this morning. I don't like change. I don't like, uh, I don't like getting out of my comfort zone, for one thing, socially. Um, those of you that know me or kind of think you know me, I'm kind of the one off in the distance somewhere watching everybody sometimes. And it takes, it takes an act of Congress or the Lord sometimes to move me to, to get to know other people. And God forgive me for that. Um, but when it comes to spiritual change, whether it's a bad attitude just being lazy or apathetic with the things of the Lord, I get so I've reached a point where I feel like I've arrived sometimes. I don't need change. And uh, well, I've been in church for years. I've been, in, uh, been saved for years. I've been around the things of God for years. Why do I need to change, Lord? Well, we should be in a constant process of being conformed to his image for one thing. And um, sometimes God has to knock on the door a little harder than I like and say and remind me that, well, no, I want some change, and there's some things in your life that need to be changed, and we need to start working on them. Today's a good time to start. So if you've been in this class for any amount of time at all, we are looking at this matter of being changed in his image. And you'll find in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, let's read in verse 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Father, thank you for your word. God, help us to be good listeners this morning. It's easy to compare ourselves among ourselves. Lord, you've told us in your word that's not wise. It's easy to think we've arrived, Father, yet Paul was still pressing toward the mark. How about ourselves? Help us, Lord, to make the lesson personal. Help us to realize, Lord, that we serve a risen Savior. You've asked us to redeem the time. You've asked us to be wise steward of your finances in the time also. Help us to be wise stewards, Lord, of this, this time in life this morning. We know you've got something for each of us. Help us to personalize it, Lord. We need your help with this lesson. The other classes may, Lord, you have the chief seat. We ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. It's a matter of renewing your mind. By and large, you're probably not going to get your mind renewed off the television set, for the most part, amen? You're not going to probably get your mind renewed off the radio, for the most part, okay? But this matter of renewing your mind involves a personal relationship with your Heavenly Father. This matter of renewing your mind and this relationship with your Heavenly Father, folks, think with me just for a minute here, involves more than just being saved this morning. If you're saved, praise God and thank your Heavenly Father for your salvation. But it doesn't just stop there. This matter of a personal relationship with your Heavenly Father involves more than God just taking care of your needs and a lot of our wants. Amen? It involves a little bit more than God taking care of the rough areas in, in the road of, of life during the week or taking care of specific problems or issues in your life. It involves a personal relationship with your Heavenly Father. It's more than being on just speaking terms. Does that make sense? I'm on speaking terms with some of my office, but I'm not close to some of these folks, okay? It's just the way it is. I'm on speaking terms with some of the relatives, okay? Or try to be anyway, amen? But that doesn't mean I'm close to them necessarily. Husband and wives, we can have a falling out sometimes. We can just be on speaking terms. Church members can just be on speaking terms. We acknowledge each other, and that's about as far as it goes. Some, amen? 
Listen, we're family whether we'd like to admit it or not, but sometimes we can just be on speaking terms. Don't talk to me, I won't talk to you, and if we do, it's going to be brief and, and very short. God help us, amen? But this relationship with your Heavenly Father has got to be more than on just speaking terms. Abraham was called the friend of God in James chapter 2. Now think with me just for a minute here. Abraham was called the friend of God. Wow. Can God say that about me this morning? Or about yourself? Moses spoke to God face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. Has it been a while? Amen? Yeah. Enoch walked with God. Can we say that about ourselves this morning? Think with me here just for a minute. God's speaking about change, spiritual change. It's more than just on speaking terms. It's more than just a distant relationship. God called David a man after his own heart. I'm afraid God can't pen those words about me. How about you? Amen. These are specific men that God has picked out for, for us as examples of, listen, it can be duplicated in you as well, and myself as well. It can be. These are examples of men who had issues just as we do, but I think they found that the relationship with God overrode that, and they wanted to be close to their Heavenly Father. They desired a relationship with their Heavenly Father. God's desire this morning, if you look with me in the book of Hosea chapter 4, is that we might know Him. Now, God help me when I know more about my job than I do about my Heavenly Father. Amen. Now, follow me here. This might get a little salty, but God help me when I know more about the political scene than I do about God. If you were to be asked this morning, who is God, what would your answer be? Have you been asked that question? Who is God? Who is the God that you worship? Explain him. Show him to me. Hosea chapter 6, if you look with me here very quickly here in Hosea chapter 4, I'm sorry. Hosea chapter 4. Look at verse number 6. My people are destroyed for lack of finances, for lack of a nice house, for lack of an education. What's it say? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I, I will also forget thy children. But knowledge of who or whom? What's God speaking about here? Who's God speaking about? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of who? Yeah. If you back up to the first part of this chapter, verse number one says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Why? Because there is no truth nor mercy, uh-oh, nor knowledge of God in the land. Now, if you think America's close to God, let me give you a wake-up call. I don't think America is anymore. And I'm going to give you one more this morning. This is going to be a little bit salty. I'm in this group. I don't think Christians are tight with God either. What do you mean by that, Brother Doug? Folks, in some ways, we have it too good. In some ways, we have it too good. I don't have to be here this morning. Amen? I don't have to worry about government interference this morning, about keeping me from the doors of this church. We have it in some ways too good. Now, thank God for his blessings, and thank God for being so very good to us. But, folks, we get apathetic if we're not careful. We get so we don't, well, we get by. If somebody were to ask me, who is the God that you worship, I would struggle giving them a, 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 a clear answer, I think. But here's the best solution to this. God has a desire that we might know him. Okay? If you look with me in the book of, of uh, Jeremiah chapter 9, look at how God orders the, prior, the priority here in this matter of Look with me in Jeremiah chapter 9. Look at the order of priority with our Heavenly Father here. 
God's desire is that we might know him. In Jeremiah chapter 9, verse number 23, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. God, look at God's order of priority here. Look, I bless you. Don't glory in these things. If you want to glory in something this morning, glory in this that you know me. Amen? Yes. God has a desire that we might know him. God's desire is that we would know him. But how am I going to know God? How to get to know God? Look with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I know the heavens declare the glory of God. But look with me through the word of God this morning. How do you get to know God? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 1 says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. For gospel be hid as hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. If you want to get to know God, you're going to have to first get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. You see this verse here again in verse number four? Who is the image of God should shine unto them. How do you get to know God? Get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Follow this up, if you would, Colossians chapter 1. The book of Colossians chapter 1. I'd ask, challenge you to follow along. Look at Colossians chapter 1. In the book of Colossians chapter 1, reading in verse number 12, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. If you want to get to know God, get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, how do you get to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Look with me in the book of John, chapter 1. The book of John, chapter 1. If I had to explain in, in, in God to somebody, I'm going to get into the Word of God and take them through the Word of God. That's the best I could do. Amen. I feel I can't go wrong in that area. God's desires that we might know him. Well, how do I know him? I need to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. How do I know the Lord Jesus Christ? I need to know the word of God. In John 1.1, 1, 1, look here. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. In verse number 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Who's being spoken about here? Jesus Christ. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. If I want to know the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to have to get into the word of God. Look with me in the book of Hebrews chapter 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 1, reading in verse 1, it says, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. What are we speaking about here? Yeah. Yep. How do I get to know God? Get to know his Son, Jesus Christ. How do I get to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Get into the Word of God. 
Yeah, get into the Word of God. You'll find if you look with me in John chapter 5, you look at John chapter 5, say, Brother Doug, I know all this. I praise the Lord for that if you, if you do. But listen, you're going to be asked this by somebody at some point. I don't remember things real well, but I've learned one thing is the Word of God speaks for itself. And the Word of God is still quick and powerful. If I can get folks into the Word of God, that's the best help I feel I can be. So if somebody asks you, who is God? Maybe this lesson will come back to mind. Get them into the Word of God. Take a minute. John chapter 5, look at me in verse number 39. What, look, what, look what it says here in John 5, 39. Search the Scriptures. Get into the Word of God. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Get into the Word of God. Search the Scriptures. In fact, take the time today, go back later, and see if these things be so. What does the Bible have to say about God? Get to know Jesus Christ. Get to know the Word of God. God's desire is that we might know Him. Now, John 13, 17 tells, tells us, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. I can know this today, okay, about God's desire for me. But there's the doing part I'm going to have to get with. This matter of being changed, I know I need change. But there comes a point I'm going to have to actively get engaged with my Heavenly Father. If I, <laughs> I'm going to have to. Amen? In Psalm chapter 27, not only does God want us to know him, but he would have us to seek after him. Psalm chapter 27. Look at the psalmist here in 20, Psalm chapter 27. Verse number 4 of Psalm 27 says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. One thing have I desired of the Lord. Folks, I'll, I'll, I'll challenge you with this this morning. You say change is not easy. Change is, is difficult. I don't feel like change. Um, I can do all things to Christ which strengtheneth me. If you started this course with some, God brought some things to mind in your life that need some change, don't quit now. Stick with it. Amen? It might be, an, it just might simply be a bad attitude. Maybe you just don't like being around people. Amen? Maybe there's an issue with sharing the gospel. Whatever it is, the purpose of the lessons is that God would work on each heart individually and show us an area that needs change and help us with it. One of these things in this matter of is change is renewing the mind. God has a desire for us to know him. God wants a personal relationship with each of us rather than a distant relationship. If you're not careful, there becomes kind of a, a distant relationship in Christianity with your heavenly father because we get too many things in between us. God would have us to seek after him. God would have your desire to be the things of God. God would have your desire to be pursuing him. If you look with me in Psalm chapter 42, look, look at these verses here. Psalm chapter 42. I, I can't pen these words. I, can, I don't have that like I should. Pray for me. As the heart panteth after the water brooks. This is verse 1 of Psalm 42. So panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God. For the living God, when shall I come and appear before God? As the, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. And God help me. It's not that way. Pray for me. I, it, it, you want that. You, you, you want that desire, but there's so many things seem to override that. Uh, maybe I've got company this morning. Uh, maybe we've gotten so detached we don't even recognize we have a problem sometimes. Look with me, if you would, please, also in, in uh, Psalm chapter 73. I don't want to be moved off my comfort zone. God help us. Psalm chapter 73, verse 25. Look at this. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. 
My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Praise the Lord. Remember we spoke about Moses earlier, about Abraham, about David? Listen, that can be duplicated among God's people here this morning. That relationship with your Heavenly Father, you can be close to your Heavenly Father too. Yes. So, or Philippians chapter 3. Look at Philippians. Now, Paul struggled with things. And the, the good he wanted to do, it seemed like he struggled with doing, and the bad seemed to be naturally come, come first. In Romans chapter 7, but Philippians chapter number, number 3. Look with me here, Philippians 3. In verse number 8, Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah, Paul was still pressing toward the mark. Paul hadn't arrived yet. Where does that leave myself? God would have us to seek after him. God would have us to spend time with him. Um, you've heard the phrase, a person is known by the company he or she keeps. Now think with me just for a minute. You're known by the company you keep. I can tell a lot about a person just by where the conversation goes. After a while, amen. I can tell a lot about a person, where they spend their time, where their passion is, what's important to them by how much time is spent on certain subjects. Amen? Yes. You could probably say the same thing about me. You can tell a lot about a person by where their passion is and where their heart is by what they talk about and what they're involved in, what comes up all the time. You're going to find here in Acts chapter 4, if you look at me here in the book of Acts chapter 4, In verse number 13, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Now, like it or not, uh, we all have to make a living, amen? Like it or not, we all have other things going on. But folks, the struggle I have, and perhaps I've got company this morning is, uh, at some point, when I walk away from folks, I'd, my desire is that they know I'm saved, amen, that I have a passion for the things of Christ. That doesn't have to be first and foremost in every conversation, but there should be something about your life that speaks about the Lord. It should be, if nothing else, your testimony. But there's, look with, with uh, the disciples here, Peter and John. They were unlearned and ignorant men, but they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Something had changed their life, something about them had changed. Look with me in Luke chapter 10. And verse number 38. Luke 10, 38 came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. She had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Martha was cumbered about much serving, came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Yeah, it's like each day is a choice in this matter of being changed in his image. Each day I have to make a choice. Each day I have to make a choice. What, which, where is it going to be today? Am I going to choose the Lord's to get closer to God, or am I going to choose to just stay in my comfort zone? Do I have a concern? Do I have a desire about seeking the Lord, pursuing the things of God? 
We're here this morning. I'd like to think we're here this morning because of the things of God. I'd like to think we're here this morning because God has something for each of us. If you're paying attention at all in the lesson this morning, one of the things God wants us is to know him, to have a better relationship with him. God would have us to seek after him, to, to pursue him. God would have us to spend some time with him. Look with me in 1 John 1 in closing this morning. In 1 John chapter 1. One, one of 1 John says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Then this, is, this then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Now here's the problem. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. The real fellowship is with your heavenly Father. But it goes on in verse 6 here. Let me read this again. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now this is chapter 6 this morning. We could spend another two weeks on chapter 6. We're not going to. I'm going to challenge you as a class. We're going to be looking at chapter 7 next week. I want to challenge you as a class. If you're just on speaking terms with your Heavenly Father, here's my challenge. Ask God to draw you closer. Ask God to draw you into a more personal relationship. If you have trouble, well, who is God? I pray you're saved, but maybe it's been a while. Get, get into the Word of God. Understand who His Son is. Understand the Word of God and a relationship there. Have you been seeking after the things of God? God's desire is that we would pursue the things of Christ. Paul was still pressing toward the mark. Have we been spending time with Him? Not just in the Word of God, but in prayer. And we've been spending real quality time. You'd be surprised when you come into a Sunday school class or a church service that if you've been spending time with your Heavenly Father during the week, how much more you get out of the service. Does that make how much more you're, you get out of the Word of God? How much more you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God leading in your life and speaking to your heart individually? Living in the real world? Amen. Jesus Christ is still the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. The Bible is still the book. I challenge you to get into it and become a student of it if you're not. We're out of time this morning. Stand, we'll be dismissed with a word of prayer.